When you have your girls, you're never alone. You get together for coffee, maybe to work out, or just to laugh. We created Hey Girl, just for you. Can't wait for you to join us. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Hey Girl. Today is Hey Girl episode five. We are back again, Kim Jacobs. Hello. I am super excited. I don't know about you. Hi. I am. I'm excited for today. Awesome. So I'm Kim with an E. And I'm Kim with an I. And Hey Girl is an extension of your sister circle, a safe space where you can share your experience and be affirmed. Whether we're married or single, stay at home or have a career, our lives are so complex and can at times be overwhelming. But we believe in the power of conversation. Sometimes just knowing you're not alone in the struggle, whatever it is, can help you get through. Ain't that right, girl? That's right. That's right. We've had some struggles today. I know that. That's for sure. <laughs> I know. Technical but at least we aren't. Yes. At least we weren't <laughs> alone in the struggle. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, so we thank everyone for hanging in there with us this afternoon. If you were uh, tuned in at five o'clock on the dot, uh, I apologize. Certain things are just not within our control. But we're here now, so it's all good. Yes. Um, so, uh, Kim Jacobs, we had Dr. Vanderpool on last week. That was awesome. Yes, that was awesome. I mean, she really gave some wonderful information um, about COVID-19. Um, yeah. That was very insightful and fun discussion. Um, a lot of information. I'm still just hung up on the one, the topic about the men and <laughs> how after, you know, they have oh. COVID, it could still last. <laughs> yeah, that's. That yeah, wasn't that was good the, news. No, <laughs> no, it wasn't. That, but it was. That it was, wasn't. Yeah, but it was a good conversation. Very good mm -hmm. conversation. We, we had with her, and yeah, we have to have definitely have her. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. No, I was saying when you have that information, you can be feel empowered. So right, glad to right. share. But yeah, right. you can have her on again. Yeah. Yes, because so many people had questions even after um, yeah. that and during that we didn't get a chance to answer. So. Definitely have to have Dr. Vanderpool pull back. But today, today, we have yeah. to continue that conversation. Um, definitely about persevering and perseverance, yeah. you know, through this whole COVID-19 um, um, pandemic. So today, we have a special guest. Oh, friend, before you introduce her, though. Oh, okay. Sorry to interrupt you. I wanted yeah. to lead into that, in, that introduction. We have a little bit of information to kind of kick off the discussion today. We have our good mm -hmm. friend, D-Knight. And we're going to introduce you to her. Uh, but before that, I want to pull up a slide that the CDC put put up mm -hmm. where, as you said, talking about perseverance. Mm -hmm. And uh, last week we talked about dealing with all the COVID-19 stuff that we have to think about as far as our physical health. Right. Um, but we thought it would be good to put up this slide about what the CDC has recommended in regards to our emotional health and our mental right. health. Um, and I think that's really what we want to kind of get into today. So um, do you have the information for that slide? I, I know it's, it had, there I was do. four points that mm -hmm. we want to make sure um, we have, we share with everyone to kind of get this conversation started. Yeah. So what right. were those So five from the points? CDC, it posted, well, it, it captured, it said, be kind to your mind. Number one, to pause, breathe, notice how you feel. And then number two was take, take breaks from COVID content. That's very important. And three, make time to sleep and exercise. I know I feel better when I exercise. I definitely do. Yeah. Take your minds off, off of things. Um, number four, reach out and stay connected. I mean, we have to sit at home. Good thing they lifted that order. But just staying at home in the same space, um, you kind of just sit in your mind to me, you know, and think yes. about things. Um, yes. So reach out, get out. Um, and number five was seek help. Um, it's overwhelmed and unsafe. So seek help yeah. if you feel like you're feeling a little off. So that yeah. was from the CDC. Very good information. And I think it's perfect to, to kick off the discussion today because I don't know about you, but I've, I've had some interest, interesting conversations just in the last few weeks with individuals mm -hmm. who have really been emotionally struggling. Maybe they're right. healthy physically, 
Um, but just, just dealing with a lot of emotions. There's just a lot of heart, heartache and brokenness and sickness and death. Some of it COVID related, some of it just happening because life is what it is. Right. right? So, so let's talk about who we've brought in today <laughs> to help us work through some of those emotional waters that we're trying to tread. Yes. Yes. So today we have our special friend, um, Dr. Danella Knight. She goes so, by D Knight. Hello. So D Knight, that's what we call her, D. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so hi, Danella. Dr. Knight. So while we're bringing her up, I'll just share that she is a uh, mother of four, four who is passionate about seeking, uh, seeing brokenness restored. She is an author and international speaker who loves teaching the truths of God's word. She earned her doctorate in clinical neuropsychology, which she uses to minister to tra trauma survivors and those who are experiencing relational distress. Dr. Knight has served her community for over 15 years through Christ-centered psychotherapy, hosting healing conferences and leading uplifting support groups and Bible studies. <clears throat> and I have personally been involved in some of those and she's awesome. She's also written four books, <coughs> excuse me, including the Communication Devotional, a resource for couples uh, that she co-authored with her husband, and the Book of Forgiveness, an easy guide to help those who are hurting reclaim their stories and move mm -hmm. past their pain. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. So you yes. can connect with her on social media via the handle at Dr. D Knight. And we are just so thrilled that she has been, she was willing to join us today. Good evening, Dr. Knight. Good evening. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. <laughs> Thank you so much so for having me. <laughs> so glad that you could join us. So you heard us talking. Uh, before we brought you in, of course, <coughs> we know individuals and maybe even we ourselves at times have struggled, uh, at, you know, emotionally um, be during this particular uh, time period. And I'm just curious to know, how are you? You know, when you're working in a field like yours, where you're helping others all the time, I'm curious to know, you know, what kind of struggles do you have personally? And, and how do you work through your own, you know, how, what kind of what's life like for you right now? Let's just let's to start there well first of all uh i think it oftentimes can depend on like if you're a homebody if you're not if you're more of an extrovert if you're more of an introvert mm -hmm. i actually happen to be an extrovert but i love being home because i like taking <laughs> naps <laughs> as kim knows that, Both I kim do know probably know this. yeah I, I do know and that. so yes and so you know having my office be about 60 feet from my bed is wonderful for me. So it's working out <laughs> fine <laughs> for me. Perfect for you. Okay. Right. Is everyone in your home enjoying it as well? I don't know about everyone. My husband has mentioned several times that he's ready to get back to the office. <laughs> However, um, I think the kids are really enjoying it, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of flexibility with their school, at least how they're being schooled right now. Um, and so they could spend all day kind of chilling, having fun. And then they have like two hours worth of work each day. I wish my schedule was like the rest of my family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hear you. Right. It never ends for us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. So a lot of things are happening right now, obviously, not just COVID-19, even the Ahmad Avery story, which I know a lot of people were shaken up by. And then, of course, the economy is a real thing. You know, as much as we li love working from home, some people are working are at home because they have no work, you know. And so uh, some of the repercussions that are occurring as a result of the, just the time that we're in. I'm sure are causing people a lot of distress, a lot of stress. <laughs> um, what would you, what do you say that people should do with those feelings? How do we handle, you know, all of this stuff that we have coming at us right now? Yeah, well, uh, before we even get to, I guess, what to do with, with the feelings, um, how about like how we not catch so many feelings in the first place, right? Um, now I'm all for experiencing the full range of emotions that we have, right? Uh, uh, but we have to limit like our intake of all of the things. Um, guarding our heart is not just about resisting vulnerability, but it's about choosing what things you allow yourself to be vulnerable to. Right. Um, choosing the atmosphere that you have around you. And that kind of that kind of impacts your emotions. 
Uh, my husband was uh, spraying some weed eater the other day, and I told him just like get a little bit on the neighbor's yard because they have a lot of clovers, <laughs> and dandelions, and stuff. And I'm like, if they have clovers and dandelions, they're going to make their way into our yard. <laughs> so yeah. we have to guard yeah. the weeds. We have to guard the things that are around us in the first place. Um, so that's one of the ways of helping to manage your emotions. Um, but also, you asked me. Something, uh, as far as how do I manage my emotions and how have I managed uh, things? I do put the same skills into practice that I've taught other people. I had someone just this week who was kind of surprised to learn that I've ever gone to therapy, and I'm like, "What? I love therapy." <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Seek help. Right. And admit, That's so one you mentioned the therapy that CDC made as well. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I know in our community, you know, it's hard. Yeah. I guess to accept the fact, oh, when you say therapy, it's like, oh, oh, something's wrong with me or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So what do you what do you say about therapy? You know, it's just not for one particular, you know, ethnic group. I mean, it's for right. everyone, really. And there's nothing wrong with going to therapy. Yeah. What I will say when someone says, oh, no, that seems like something might be wrong with me. Yes, something is wrong with most people on planet Earth. <laughs> you don't have thoughts that pass through right. your mind that right. are not appropriate, that you're like, maybe I should right. talk to somebody. <laughs> right. God bless you if that's you. Right. We're all happy for yeah. you. The rest of us need might need a little help from now on again, right? And so right. Um, the answer is, yeah, it's okay though. That's like the basis of empathy. Mm -hmm. The idea that we all need help at some point. And I think anyone can benefit from therapy as long as they believe they can benefit from therapy. That's mm -hmm. all you need is the belief that you can benefit from it. If you think mm -hmm. it's not going to work for you, it will not work for you. Mm -hmm. If you believe that it will not work, it won't work. That's but if so you believe that it will, I promise you, you can get something from therapy. Yeah. What what um, do you see a lot of people resistant to therapy that you encounter? And, yeah, and I don't see them at work having... because they don't come to me. <laughs> they don't go to therapy. Right. Um, I mean, do I see a lot of people who probably need yeah. therapy and need to go? Absolutely. Um, and yeah. so do we see a lot of resistance just in general? Absolutely. So the normal, natural thing is to be on the defense in some way, is to resist the idea that you have vulnerabilities, to resist the idea that something could be wrong or that you could in some way fall short. That is normal. That is natural. What I'm asking is that you do something other than the normal, other than the natural, because the normal and the natural will not get you to the goals that you want in life, just for the most part. Right. Now, you, you mentioned um, a moment ago about guarding your heart, right? And a lot of times when I've heard that phrase, I, I've um, heard it in the context of, you know, like um, immoral things that you might read or, or watch mm -hmm. on television and how you should, you know, guard your heart against those things. Can you talk a little bit more about um, how, how you, you, you talked a little bit already, but I, I just want to really kind of emphasize that point that when we talk about guarding our heart, it, there's more, more than one way to do that. I, I had a conversation with someone recently and, and I don't know that they have fully appreciated the role that things uh, that we maybe are spending time with might be contributing to these feelings of, you know, frustration or, or, or um, you know, overwhelm or what have you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, when we talk about our heart and even that text that talks about guarding your heart, um, when the Bible talks about that, it's talking about the seat of like your emotions, your decision making even. And we know from uh, just psychological research now that what we think about very much impacts our emotions. They're very intertwined. And so if I start spending time constantly thinking about, like, I mean, the news, my husband calls it his daily dose of terror because they start with the death toll. <laughs> That's like the first right. thing they do. So he, right. and he's purposely putting a box around that. He's mm -hmm. purposely setting boundaries around how much time he spends in taking this terrorizing material, material, right? right. And so um, what I want you to do is start thinking about your thinking, pay attention to what you pay attention to. Um, I use an example about how uh, my husband and I were going on a cruise last year. And as we were leading up to the cruise, so my husband was doing everything. I was just packing my bags. That was a large job for me. And so <laughs> he was handling everything else with the cruise. And he started telling me about how he kept seeing these news stories of people falling overboard. And I was like, you know what? I haven't seen any news stories about people falling overboard. You know why? Because I don't click on any news stories about people falling right. overboard. Right? <laughs> so yeah. 
just like social media has an algorithm, just like the news and uh, Google has an algorithm, our minds have an algorithm. The mm -hmm. things that we pay attention to will be highlighted for us. So we can choose what we highlight to. Uh, we can choose what things we like highlight in our minds. And that's how you start to take like captive every thought every single thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You have to start paying attention to what am I even paying attention to? What are the thoughts that are running through my head? And we have up to 70,000 thoughts per day and 98% of it is repetitive, which means something yeah. is going through our heads over and over and over again. And we have to make a conscious choice about that because UC Berkeley says, if we do not make a choice ahead of time, 75 to 80% of the time, it will be negative. Mm. 75 to 80% wow. of your thoughts will be negative if you do not choose what you're going to think, if you do not wow. choose what you're going to focus on. To shift it. That's just the to normal, actually, natural thing. You actually can just choose what to think about. You <laughs> can not start to. Allow and so here's what you do. Start yeah. journaling some of the things that you're thinking, right? right? When you feel, whether you're feeling positive, negative, just make a natural uh, habit out of journaling things, right? Mm -hmm. And if you start journaling down, I guarantee you'll start to see a pattern. After a week, after two weeks, you'll start to see a pattern. Um, there's just a pattern to our thoughts because our brains like to take shortcuts. Right. And so um, one of the things I, I often do to uh, help people think about how our brains take shortcuts, just think of a color and a tool. Don't say it. Just think of a color and a tool. Okay, now what's the first thing that came to your mind? Green and a, <laughs> a hoe. Y'all Okay, green hoe. Okay. Who who else? What else? What else came to your mind? The other Kim. Oh. It, she didn't um, get a chance to think of one. I know, okay, I it's too late because you already heard Kim. I, yeah. <laughs> I guarantee most people, I guarantee most people who are listening thought either red, some other tool, or hammer, some other color. Of, I just thought I thought um, of a hammer. You thought hammer as well. I thought, okay. yeah, I hammer. That is your brain taking a shortcut. Mm -hmm. I'm not using any type of magic. I'm not doing a magic trick. That's mm -hmm. just because I know that hammer is one of the first tools you learn. Right. right. It's the first, one of the first colors people learn, right? So our brains are just taking shortcuts. What will it mm -hmm. do? It will take negative shortcuts because we've been doing that for 30 or 40 years. That's mm -hmm. just what your brain is used to. So start writing down. What are my thoughts? Like when I was sad the other day, what was I thinking about? Oh, I was thinking about how my mom was getting on my nerves. So I was thinking about how my neighbor sprayed some like weed eater on my lawn. <laughs> Think about what it is you were thinking about. I guarantee that it's impacting your, um, your emotions as well. Right, right. Yeah. And, so, and like um, you said, sitting in... I know for me, the first doing this at the beginning of this um, stay at home order and me teleworking and all that. I mean, for the first three days, I truly was like consumed with TV and the news and just listening, all kinds of sources. But I had to recognize that's the thing I recognize and say, OK, I'm getting too deep into this because it's taking me in a different place, a different path. that I don't want to go. So I kind of pull I pull myself out of it. And start thinking of other thoughts and start doing other things, you know, focusing my energy, that energy on something positive. So for me, I recognize that. But for others who don't recognize that, right. you know, um, how, what is your what's your feeling on that? Yeah, well, it's hard when you don't recognize. Right. So one of the first steps is to start paying attention. So that's why I said that journaling step can be helpful. Mm -hmm. But if you don't even know that you need help, then you might I'd have to depend on some of the people around you and right. getting some feedback from people around you, right? But um, it, it, if you don't even know, you might not even realize that you need the help. You're right. That, that's, mm -hmm. Those are the biggest dangers, really, the unknown unknowns. I don't even know that the way I'm thinking is negative. I don't even know that the way I'm thinking is what's causing some of these depressive feelings or these, mm -hmm. uh, this disability and whatnot, right? And mm -hmm. so that's why Start, anyone who is listening, start writing down some of your thoughts, right? Start writing down some of your feelings. Start, right, just start getting in a practice of paying attention because intentionality is going to be the way out of any situation, right? You right. cannot just you're gonna accidentally wake up and have a great day and have a great life and live about all mm -hmm. the purpose, all the things that you're called to do. Victory will not happen by accident. You have to be right. intentional about it. Right. That's so right. true. So I wonder if I could bring up a slide since we're kind of talking about being intentional. And that is a, a resource that I found from uh, Therapy Therapy for Black Girls, um, which is a great resource. I think you're going to probably okay. talk a little bit about that, uh, Dr. Knight. Um, but the, the, the coping kit is a, a way that they offered on a recent podcast for being very intentional about 
uh, managing your feelings, right? Mm-hmm. And so the suggestion is that if you plan ahead, uh, this kit, like a create for yourself a nice box, you know, mm-hmm. that maybe a basket or something and fill it with these things, you can sort of um, preempt maybe, or at least capture um, whatever, when your emotions are starting to get out of control, right? Mm-hmm. You can kind of uh, catch them ahead of time. And so these, you know, you're, you can call it your coping kit or your coping basket or whatever you want. But the idea is that you fill it with a collection of things that will distract you from your problems and calm the intensity of your negative emotion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I, I feel like that is specifically to what you're speaking to what you're suggesting, Dr. Knight, about, you know, being intentional. And so like even planning ahead to have this resource for yourself. And so some of the things you might fill it with would be a journal. That's number one on the list, right? I feel like journaling is like, free therapy you know if you if you can't get yeah. somewhere to talk to a professional just write it down and just you know and you know they talk about it not being an academic exercise sometimes you think about a journal you're right. like oh my god mm-hmm. i gotta write something down you know it could be doodling it could be um you know any form of expression that kind of frees you mm-hmm. and then you might also put in your basket you know a puzzle that you enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. you know some of us have you know mindless activities that we engage with when we just kind of want to detox or, or debrief after a long day or whatever. And so that's kind of the idea. Something you can hold, they suggest, you know, like silly putty or, or the stress balls where you can just kind of work through those right. um, emotions you might be having. Um, also, um, the uh, a candle or sweet smelling fragrance yes. that you enjoy. I mean, I know me, I have a few favorite candles that I just light them and my mood yes. completely it changes. changes. Yeah. It changes your mood. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so, <laughs> and so yeah. yeah. I want to I want to jump in really quickly about yeah. that. Uh, I mentioned the other things, right? So journaling is wonderful, but Kim, your doctorate is in rhetoric, and so of course you love words, right? Hey, <laughs> I love yeah, words. I, I was an English major. And oh. so let's just, uh, for the people who might not like writing as much, right? Yes. Um, the sensory yeah. things that you just, just <laughs> right. Touched, right? So um, having things that you touch. Um, mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why that's so important. We live our life not just in this one dimension of words. We actually have visual memories. We have um, tactile memories. So things that we've touched, just things that come up for us. And this whole pandemic thing, right? This whole public health emergency. Mm-hmm. It's really like a collective trauma that we're all going through at the same time. You're mm-hmm. constantly being told, again, the death count, how you might die if you go out and you get this yes. disease, right? This is this trauma, trauma, trauma. And so one of the ways trauma is stored is in our bodies. It's not just stored in words. It's stored in this anxious feeling that you can't get really to rest at night or you can't get well-rested sleep when you wake up, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's mm-hmm. all of these different things. And so you have to find different avenues for releasing it, not just writing. Yes, writing is wonderful. I obviously yes. support that. But um, the tactile things are really important. Important, right? So something to touch, something to smell. Our sense of smell is the only sense that is not filtered out by another organ before it goes to the brain. And so one of the things I have, I have it right here um, in my little home office, is just a little uh, scented oil thing. Why? Because it just helps with grounding. It helps you pay attention to your thoughts. It helps bring you back and center you on the here and now not spiraling into whatever, what could be and what if, and oh no, right? It keeps you present. And so those things are really, really important. Yeah. 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 I mean, it yeah, is. Aromatherapy is a real thing. <laughs> it is. It is. Our other senses. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a we have a question, um, and this is actually one of my questions: is that um, how can a person know when they're depressed? I mean, how can a person, especially yeah. if you don't have anyone around them? You know, I have yeah. people around me, my circle, you know, my family, my 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 um, circle of friends that will say, "Hey, you're something a little off." But what if you don't have that? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, oftentimes people want to know, I guess, what's the difference between like the mental health and emotional health Mm or, um, you know, what does what's the difference between someone who's having a mental illness or someone who's maybe just struggling emotionally? And I will say that we all struggle emotionally at some point. Right. Right. Um, There's something that we might struggle with. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I like to think of the difference as that there is an it. There's a something. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as uh, depression and anxiety, quite often there's not an it. You're depressed mm-hmm. and you just wake up and it's just like, I just can't do it. I'm just like, I just, mm-hmm. I'm calling into work because it's just, it's 
it's too much, right? Mm -hmm. Or you're anxious and it's just like, you're anxious about a lot of things. It's not that you're anxious about test results. It's not that you're anxious about a, an assignment that you have to do. You're anxious mm -hmm. because you're just anxious. Like you woke up yeah. and you just feel really wound tight. There's not an mm -hmm. it. There's not a, okay, after I pay the rent this month and I've gotten that handle, okay, I can relax. No, it's, there's always something that I'm worried about. Oh goodness, it's not going to work out. Oh my goodness. And that's again, the negative slant that we're all used to. But mm -hmm. when you find that that's consuming your time, when you find that it's impacting your ability to work, your ability to rest, your ability to socialize with, with others, mm -hmm. that's when mm -hmm. you start saying, okay, there's something else here than just struggling through something. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. when you would definitely suggest someone get professional help. That's is that not something, is that something that's yes. not going to just be handled with, you know, an aromatherapy candle. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. And that is not going to do it. <laughs> it's gonna, you need, gonna need something else and that uh, kind yeah. of brings up you know the idea of well can we not just pray about it right a lot of Christians right. feel like you know why can't we just pray about it or is this person struggling with their faith and um one of the things one of the examples I use to tell the difference between like uh you know just a faith issue and maybe something mm -hmm. that's neurobiological something that's going on with the body is um, this gentleman who had a tumor in his brain. And the reason he even found out is because he said that for about 45 seconds a day, he would feel so wiped out, so depressed that he just felt like he, if he had the energy to do it, he would have killed himself. That's how he found out he had wow. a tumor that was pressing on a certain part of wow. his brain. That is how powerful our brains are. That it, it has nothing to do with his faith in God. It had nothing to do with whether or not he believed that God was there for him and had provided wow. for him. It simply had to do with neurochemicals and a part of his brain that was being accessed by this tumor, right? Mm, wow. Same thing. And that's why medication and therapy is treatment of choice for most disorders, right. uh, anxiety, yeah. depression, ADHD, Medication and therapy are treatment of choice. Why? Because there is a neurochemical issue going on. I saw someone saying on Twitter just this week that um, uh, worry is a soft form of atheism. And I was like, okay, hear me mm. out. Sometimes, <laughs> right? <laughs> and can it give some indication of you know your faith and where you're placing your faith and whether mm. or not you're still worried about this thing that God has said he's going to take care of? Absolutely. Yeah. Can it give some insight into that? Absolutely. Can it simply be neurochemicals? Can it simply be that your brain needs maybe some chemistry adjusted? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of people are afraid of becoming like dependent on their medications. And I often tell people, well, there is a difference between dependence and addiction, right? right. So I wear contacts. I am dependent on my contacts. I would yeah. never say that I'm addicted to my contacts, right? <laughs> but am I dependent on them? Absolutely, right? right? And no, it's, yes. no, it's like saying that, oh my goodness, when I was a teenager, I started this, you know, addiction to my glasses. No, absolutely not. <laughs> but are you dependent on them? You so you can see? see right. Yes. <laughs> no. Might you be dependent on some medication so that you're not anxious and so that yeah, you're not right. depressed? Absolutely. But that's just yeah. to set things back in order to where they're supposed to be. Right. You know, it's right. so interesting yeah. because we are, no, we will no problem deal with our physical ailments, right? We yeah. have no problem saying, oh, I have high blood pressure. Oh, I need, you know, contacts or, or I need a, a brace for my arm or my leg, but let there be yeah. something wrong mentally. We suddenly want to go into denial and be like, oh, no, no, yeah. no, I'm good. I'm good. You know? Yeah. 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 And just say, like and I'm you not, not going to pass that. Right. And like oh, you said, Dee, you just want to say, oh, we could just pray about it. No, yeah. you need to go right. seek help. You need to but, go right. We just do something other than prayer. I it's, like I yeah. just personally, I don't know, I'm not a theology major, but I can tell you that I know the word of God says we have one who Absolutely. ever lives to intercede for us. Yeah. But if he only stayed up there praying, he would have never gone to the cross. Right. And right. so I'm pretty sure we need so something pray. in addition to prayer. Jesus right. in did something other too. Than he went to a cross. Oh and so I think we ought to do something other than prayer, especially when we right. have those things available to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So D, how, um, I had a question. Um, someone had a question yeah. about finding a therapist. Um, how do you go about finding a therapist and also for a child, um, a good therapist? I mean, is there like a directory or is there like just kind of a referral type thing? Yeah. Uh, so I think that uh, the therapy for black girls.com site is wonderful. 
um, is a wonderful resource and it is not just for women. It is, uh, for, it's literally the women on there or the therapists on there because there are men on there as well are simply saying that they are taking an aspect that is culturally sensitive, culturally appropriate for black women in particular. But oftentimes they see men, oftentimes they'll see people who of other races. They're just saying that, Hey, listen, I'm culturally competent. And so the therapy for black girls side is the first place that I always refer people to. If you don't find someone on there, psychology today is an option. Or if you know someone who has a therapist, word of mouth is wonderful. Um, when I move to a new place, if I want to find a doctor, you know what I do? I, and if I want to find a pediatrician, you know what I do? I call the hospital and I talk to a nurse on the pediatric ward and I ask them, who would you send your child to? <laughs> okay. Yes. So find people who have, are, if you have someone who has already gotten good therapy, ask them, well, what's mm -hmm. your therapist's name? You know, ask them like, okay, can I get a referral from your therapist? Because generally, if their therapist is doing a good job, they'll probably refer to people who are also doing a good job. And it's really about the relationship you form with that person. If you don't like the first right. person, I, I, give it a couple tries, right? If you could tell yeah. ah, they'd rub me the wrong way, find someone else. There is someone out of the billions of people on this planet that you will connect with that will be supportive for you. Mm. Awesome. Um, now, I know that um, I've also had some people recently who have been affected by grief and loss, death. Um, in particular, do you have any advice for individuals like that? I mean, is it the same the advice that you'd give to anyone or is there anything in particular when you're dealing with individuals who've suffered loss that you that you say to them or, or suggest for them? Yeah, so kind of, um, it's kind of the same. When I say it's kind of the same, most of what we deal with in therapy is loss. Uh, it could be loss of a job. It could be loss of uh, just your functionality that you're used to. I mean, you, going up the stairs takes a little longer. You have aches and pains, just loss of the things that you used to do with ease. Uh, a lot of things that we deal with in therapy are lost and are, you know, involving us grieving things and grieving things well, right? Um, so to some degree, it's still paying attention to your thoughts. To some degree, it's still checking in on your emotions and checking to see, like, um, you know, I, I talk about like this emotional validation. So you're just, mm -hmm. just checking in to see where where these emotions are coming from, what are they about, so that you're not just letting them wash over you, right? Mm -hmm. You're paying attention to what are the thoughts that are behind these emotions. Um, but also this whole COVID thing has grief in a whole different sphere because yeah. um, one of the things that's great for grieving is being able to have a support network, yeah. having someone else that you go to and that you can connect connect with that you're not just connecting with over the phone but you can touch you can hold hands and you can hug absolutely right those things are absolutely. very important parts of grieving mm -hmm. so we're all having to learn a different way I don't want to say necessarily a new normal um because uh, uh my friend Kelly Holder Dr. Kelly Holder said something really awesome she said you know I'm sitting here in my sunroom and I'm very tempted to believe that I'm working from home but this is not true I'm surviving yeah. a pandemic we are oh, all through the pandemic. You're not simply working from home, right? Um, you're yeah. working through all of the chaos and the trauma that's going on around you. And then on top of it, for individuals who are grieving, you're mm -hmm. adding another layer, right? Um, and so one of the things I say to do is start some type of tradition, some type of ceremony, something that is, because even if you can't connect like in a uh, at a funeral, a large funeral at this time, um, find something that is meaningful for you because we are just, we're just used to having some type of ceremonies just as human beings, right? Uh -huh. um, we're used to having a wedding and not just getting married. We're used to having a funeral and not just getting buried. We're used to having some type of ceremony. So starting some type of tradition, it could be growing a plant. It should be, it could be planting a tree. It could be journaling something about the person doing something in their honor, um, donating to a fund that they believed in. Right. Um, but right. doing something intentional, once again, there's that word, right. Mm -hmm. Doing something intentional to honor that individual that, uh, mm -hmm. that you're mourning, that you're going through this grieving process about. That's good. That's yeah. good stuff. Well, I know, um, you know, some people may feel ashamed, you know, about their emotional health or don't want to say anything or, you know, say I need help in such a way because I'm having these feelings. Um, you know, to be in denial of shame about this, what are your feelings about people who feel that way? Uh, what can you do yeah. to support a friend or someone who feels like that, who you know that needs a little bit of help or counseling or something, and they just kind of ignore the signs or feel shameful but what do you do for that? 
Yeah, yeah, for us. So I love us, uh, the work of right? Brene Brown yeah. in this area, in the area of shame and vulnerability. Um, she's done really great work on that. So uh, anyone who wants to look up Brene Brown, she is my girl in my head. Yeah. Um, and so she has done a lot of work on that. And the whole idea is that shame only grows in silence. Mm. when you allow yourself to share that thing that is causing so much shame for you and it is met mm -hmm. with empathy, shame has no place to go. It cannot survive that, right? Um, so empathy is like the great vanquisher of, of shame. Um, and what do you do for empathy? You start to listen. Like you don't have to always have the right words to say. You right. don't have to have the right uh, comeback or the right uh, advice. You know, you just have to listen to people with care and concern. Like, what do you need in that moment, right? What does this person need in this moment? Usually a listening ear. And I often talk about uh, Job's friends, right? How they get a bad rap. I think they got a bad rap, right? Because you're like, you know, Job's friends. Oh yeah, they were talking all this stuff. They were saying, oh, Job, it's your fault and you did this and you need to repent, right? But what did Job's <laughs> friends do when they first got there? They, they sat, sat on the ground and wept yeah. with him for seven him. days. Wow. Seven days, y'all. Like yeah. most of us wow. can for seven seconds. You know what seven <laughs> seconds is? Silence with someone? Yeah. It takes a lot of vulnerability to just right. sit there and hold someone's hand, to just sit there and let them cry, to just sit there and cry with them. Wow. Right? Seven minutes. Wow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They sat there and they wept with him for seven days. That's empathy. That that's that's thing. mourning with someone who mourns, right? right? And that's what we're going to do is mourning with someone who mourns. So the first thing to do to support a friend is to listen to them, enter their own their subjective world, right? Mm -hmm. And see what's going on with them. And then ask them what they want you to do to support them, right? Ask them, how can I best support you? Like, do you need me to make a meal? Do you need me to just listen? Or are you wanting to vent right. right now? Do you want some advice? Right. And, can, and then give them advice if they want it. But I've learned to ask people. Right. Like, so I'll tell people sometimes I see people struggling with stuff and I'm like, hey, let me know if you need information on X, Y, Z. And they're like, OK, I will. And I'm like, Whew, I was about to go mind their business. I was about to go give them all this advice and waste all of my energy for the day. <laughs> you know, and it turned out they didn't even want it. So just ask. <laughs> Asking is the best policy. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it is. that's awesome. So do you have any other resources or information that you want to share? We've, we've covered a lot. Um, I don't know if we've answered all the questions, but um, I think you've, you've given us some great stuff already. Is there anything else that you would offer to our, our viewers today? Yeah, um, you know, one of the things that I was uh, kind of thinking about when we were uh, talking about, uh, you know, like just where we are right now. And this is Dr. Uh, Shauna uh, Denham Wilkes, who I thought uh, gave a great little thing. I don't know if you guys have the Maslow's uh, thing, that uh, little chart, but if not, I'll um, probably put it in the... the um, the comment section, but uh, it, just thinking about like where we are with things. And this is for everyone who is surviving this, right? So I've seen a lot of posts that say things like, you better come out of this um, time at home, like with a book or, a, you know, the film or whatever it is that God has been calling <laughs> you to do. Like that is, yeah. Cool. But look, y'all, Maslow came up with something really awesome. It's called a hierarchy of needs. And it's a triangle. At, yes. at base, you've got like your logical needs. You're talking about just like breathing food, sex, water, sleep, right? The things that you need physically. Yeah. Um, uh, safety needs go on top of that, right? So now that I've gotten food and water and, you know, I've gotten some sleep, okay, now I can start thinking about security, like employment, resources, um, my family, right? Uh, just, uh, my health, my property, all of those things. Then right. on top of that, after those are settled, now I can pay attention to friendships and sexual intimacy maybe and and just like growing with my partner and then mm -hmm. after that maybe now I can okay those needs are met now I can start focusing on like confidence and and mm -hmm. respecting others right caring for others um right. and then I can focus I can focus now on creativity but I need all of those other things first wow but this, uh, Sean, Dr. Uh, Shauna Wilkes she, she shared something that circled like the safety and physiological and she was like we are here OK, right. <laughs> we're focusing on food and water and toilet tissue. Right. <laughs> Those are the things that are like paramount in a pandemic. Right. Um, we're yeah. focusing on security. Right. Our job, our employment. Um, and there's people out here who are like, OK, but what is my purpose? God bless <laughs> you if that's what you're working on. Uh, glory to God. And then 
And on top of <laughs> self-actualization, right? Uh, on top of the pyramid is transcendence. Now you're talking about leaving a legacy and allowing That's other people right. to grow from your experiences. <laughs> Mix all that, y'all. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to crush any dreams. But that, all of that has its place, but there is a time for everything, right? Wow. right. Um, so right. don't yourself out trying to mm. say like, okay, I should be growing. Like, I can't believe I have all this time and I still haven't cleaned out the garage. Girl, you are surviving a pandemic. You're doing <laughs> right. right. You're okay, you have, you have food. Have you eaten today? <laughs> have you paid attention to your thoughts? Just a little bit, right? And yeah. so just give yourself a pat on the back for the small things um, and yeah. take small steps. Most things uh, start off small, despise not small beginnings. That is so right. important. Just yeah. like, like enjoy what you're doing right now, moment by moment. Pay attention. Have those, those uh, you know, very conscious, intentional times. You're washing your hands. Pay attention to how the soap feels on your hand. Pay attention to how the water feels on your hand. All of those yeah. things are just really mindful behaviors mm -hmm. that you can build in. Right. Listen, wow, you just set, that was good. You just set us all free. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. The book is going to be at the end of the pandemic. <laughs> Mercy, because that is so true that there, there's been so much pressure in the atmosphere to like yeah. be super productive right now because you've got all this time. And I'm like, where is all this time that we're supposed to have? Because <laughs> right. I'm not where is it going? It. It's, yeah, it's going somewhere, but right. yeah, yeah. You just, you just I thought I was going to start a garden with my children, y'all. It was going great. Two days without sun, and those plants died. All of them died. I oh, said, you no. know what? <laughs> it's a pandemic, and I'm plant some more seeds, maybe. Right. <laughs> oh man, that's so good. That good is so stuff, good. D. Yeah, oh man, God, listen, we we are we are running out of time, so. We are. Uh, can't believe it. We're gonna, so fast. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. Oh Thank you so much, Dr. Knight. You well, have been a, a tremendous blessing to us today. And I know that you have some resources for us that you're going to share and leave with yeah. us to share with our, our viewers. And if there are additional questions, we can field those after the mm -hmm. show. But we, I just want to thank God for you. Yes. Ministry. If you would share with us real quick um, your your social media information and, and where they can find you to to participate in all the things that you're doing real quick, and then we'll we'll go ahead and close the show with our with our scriptures. But I'm gonna let you do that first. Absolutely. If uh, you want to find me, it is uh, Dr. D Knight. So that's D R D E E K N I J H T on most social media. So just look me up on there. You can send me a message or what have you, and I'll have no problem getting back to you. Awesome. That's awesome. Thanks awesome. So Dr. Knight. Well, we <laughs> always close. We always close with scriptures. So there's three um, scriptures that we pulled to kind of help with this whole topic of mental health um, that you can refer to. Uh, the first scripture reference is, um, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Lord have mercy. Matthew <laughs> 6, 27. Um, the next one is, therefore, do not, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And that's yes, Matthew 6, 34. And the last um, scripture reference is, may, God, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's Romans 15, 13. Amen. 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 Well, Amen. I feel like we have been given hope today for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Knight really gave us uh, some good information and I'm just so thankful for her. Um, you know, this whole month we're, we're talking about perseverance, guys. Yes. So this is just another uh, thing that, that we need to... You uh, put in our toolbox to help mm -hmm. us persevere. Absolutely. Um, so uh, next week we'll be back again. Uh, we have yes. another great show planned for you. Um, we're continuing with perseverance again, and we're going to talk to a very special guest, Dr. Marissa yes. Rice, captain of the uh, in the U.S. Public Health Service Commission. So mm -hmm. she's going to share with us uh, her experience working in hot spots, COVID-19 hot spots. And Lord have mercy. She's definitely had to persevere. She's also a Absolutely. wife. Absolutely. Yes. So and has a story to tell. Oh man, I cannot wait to hear her story <laughs> and uh, be inspired by, by her. Absolutely. Sure. That'd be another great episode. Yes. Well, 
that's all for it for uh, it. Hey girl today <laughs> in the meantime remember we're your girls whatever yes. you're going through i'm kim with an e and i'm kim with an i god bless you we love you bye Have a great rest of your week <laughs> hey girl thank you so much for joining us today please join us next week as we are joined by dr marisa rice a captain in the U.S. Public Health Service Commission. She will join us by sharing her experience working in the hot spot of this pandemic and also being separated from her family for an extended period of time. This is going to be another great episode. Please join us next week, May 23rd at 5 p.m. See you then.